Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, this bedroom is freezing. I'm cold. If you'd hurry and get dressed, you wouldn't feel so cold. I am hurrying, and I am getting dressed, and I still feel cold. Any windows open? Mm, I looked. Oh, then you're cold, too. Well, I'm not a stone, you know. Aren't you? No. Well, for heaven's sake. You know, David, it's very funny. The house has been gradually getting cold all afternoon. Now it's positively frigid. All of us with the sniffles, not good. Did you adjust the thermostat before it got so cold? You mean push up that little jigger on the wall to make the house warm? Mm, that's right. I, I showed you how it works. Remember? I know how it works, only it doesn't make the house warm. Or you turn the dial up to the right to where you want the heat to be. Of course I did. What do you think I do? Turn it down? I wouldn't know. Well, I turned it in case you're interested. It's been getting colder ever since. It's broken, that's what it is. It's not broken. How do you know it's not broken? Because we happen to have a perfect oil system for heating. It just doesn't go and break for no reason. Well, maybe there is a reason. You probably didn't turn it up at all. Well, look for yourself. It's just outside the door in the hall. I bet you the thermostat reads 32. 32 is freezing. Well, I'm freezing. Oh. Go on, have a look. And you'll believe your wonderful little oil system can break. It can't break, I tell you just amazes me how you take sides with an oil system against your own wife. Well, the oil system for heating this house is a very much perfected piece of equipment. I'll tell you that right now. Suppose you can't say the same about me? No, I can't say the same about you. <laughs> now, hurry up and get dressed. I You'll am You'll be late hurrying. for the Reynolds. I hate being late. I am freezing. I can hardly move. The reason the heat isn't going up is because it's... It's probably so frozen it can hardly oh, move, too. all right, all right. I'll look at the jig in the hall and see what the temperature is. Put on your overcoat or the shock will turn you to ice. You get dressed. When did you say you turned it up? Oh, about uh, five o'clock, I guess. Turned up all right to 84 degrees. Well, the house is certainly no 84 degrees. Why'd you turn it up so high? Because it was so cold. That has anything to do with it, has it? Oh, probably not. Oh. Well, what's the temperature now? 64. 64? 64. Well, that's below normal. Way below. <laughs> I guess I better go down to the cellar and have a look at it. Gosh. You better hurry. We're due at the Reynolds at 7.15, quarter of 7 now. I'm almost ready now, darling. Stop fussing. David, be careful. Of what? I don't know. Just be careful. What's all this shouting? Say, Mom, are you freezing? I thought this was some kind of new air conditioning. I'm freezing, yes. What's the matter with the house? Did a wall blow down? Well, David's gone down to look at the oil furnace. He says he knows all about it. Well, if he says he does, he probably does. David's that kind of a man. You know, you're a wonderful mother-in-law. First son-in-law to have. And as a mother, I'm a total flop. Complete flop? Maybe you're out of oil. Golly. Listen to the noises. Oh, it's certainly a luxury to have a husband in the cellar. Who can fix things, I hope. Well, David says it's not broken. He says it's too good a furnace to break. Does that make sense to you? No, but men feel differently about machines than we do. David feels positively human about them. He trusts them more than he does me. That is no small wonder. Aren't you dressed yet? No, Mama's talking. I can't do two things at once. Did you get the furnace fixed? Are we out of oil? No, we're not out of oil. There was nothing to fix. Well, what was the matter, darling? Not a thing. Just had to tighten a little screw that held the little gasket where the pipe led to the chamber. Oh, where enough, the... enough, enough, enough. But so the house gets warmer. Poor Mom will be frozen stiff as a mackerel by the time we get home. Stop worrying about poor Mama and get yourself dressed or you won't be going out to get home from. You really fixed it, David? You're superhuman. I'm also a little greasy in the hands. Oh, certainly. By the aren't. time I get them washed, I want you to be dressed. What's the big hurry about my getting dressed for? The big hurry about your getting dressed for is that if you don't hurry, you, you get sidetracked and we'll be late. What's five minutes? Besides, the sidetrack part's the most interesting part of living, I always say. Hey, where's that clean shirt I laid out? 
Right there on the bed, under my wrap. Really, sometimes I wonder what you... You think I did before I was married. What you did about what? About getting places on time. Hmm. You probably never got any place on time before you were married. I suppose every husband thinks that of a wife. I suppose every husband thinks that a wife's life began the day she stepped to the altar. Well, didn't yours? Of course it did, darling. Say, do you remember to have my trousers pressed? <laughs> I talk wifely, he talks trousers pressed. Your trousers pressed was the last thing Bertha did before she and Fritz went out to dinner. Well, for once, I get a little service around here. Oh, you are persecuted, yeah, absolutely persecuted. Am. Hanging in your closet. Mama! What is it you want now? Nothing. I was just wondering if you were starting to feel any warmer. No, colder. Well, uh, go out in the hall and see what the thermostat says. All right. It should be up to 70 by now. It's coming down to 62. Oh, I can't understand it. Maybe you turned the wrong screw, David. No, no, no. I, I never turned the wrong screw. Maybe you did this time. It is chilly, David. <gasps> Oh, and Mama still has her coat. David, please do something. I can't bear to think of poor old Grandma spending the night in this igloo. All right. But you women expect miracles in two minutes. Not at all. We just expect you to be able to fix things around here. After all, you are an architect. Well, I am pretty good at fixing things. You're miraculous, darling. I dare say I am. Usually he does know what he's doing. You know, David's a very talented husband. He always knows what he's doing. Mama, for heaven's sakes, put on your coat. Leave me alone. Cold will get worse. So will yours. Mine's mine's gone, practically. So is mine. <clears throat> now leave me alone and get dressed. You must be freezing running around in your slip. I am freezing. Then get dressed. If you get keep David waiting, he'll be furious. <gasps> David's fixing again. Hey, throw me my shoes, would you, Mama? They're under the dresser right by you. That's a beautiful place for your shoes. Do they bother you under the dresser? They wouldn't bother me in the closet where they belong, either. Well, I put them under the dresser this afternoon so I would know where they were tonight. Wouldn't you know where they were in the closet? Mm, might not. Your system fascinates me. Works perfectly for me. Just don't forget the combination. Well, the house will be warm in about two minutes. Is that a guarantee? It is a guarantee. Good. Now, let me get the dirt off my hands. Say, I noticed you're not dressed yet. Shoes are on, my hair's combed. Which is more than yours is. Say, Mama, where are you going? This happens to be your room, and David wants to get dressed. He's decent. I happen to like my privacy, even if you don't. Say, Mama, let me know when you start feeling warmer. It won't be too soon. Oh. You know, it's a, it's a really efficient heating system. Beautifully designed. Simple to work, too. That's good. The best part is that it reacts so quickly. You turn it up. In two minutes, it's down ten degrees. Laugh if you like. You'll see. Oh, I certainly wouldn't want to be an ice cube, would you? I don't imagine it's so hot being an ice cube. No, it's not so hot being us either. <laughs> Say, David, what do you think is the matter with that heater? Not a thing. Now, David, stop being sentimental. Something must have been wrong. No, nothing was wrong. But it doesn't just go down for nothing. Will you get dressed? Ha! Huh? So something was wrong. I'm almost dressed. In spite of my fixing the heater... Though there was nothing wrong with it... I am dressed before you. Ah, you look so handsome. Thank you. Lovely white shirt, lovely blue pinstripe suit. Lovely. Get that look out of your eye. Oh, you're no fun. You have a one-track mind. I'm freezing. My extremities have turned pale blue. Good! Blue is a very becoming color to you, Mama. What was the thermostat the last time you read it? Uh, what was it, David? 62, Mama. Congratulations. 60 now, falling rapidly. 60? David, maybe we better call the plumber or something. No, no. If there's anything wrong with the heater, a plumber won't help. But you will, I suppose. You doubt me? Well, all I know is I'm freezing. It doesn't matter about me. I'm going out. But Mama's staying home. The baby's staying home with her, and, and they... They have to... It's probably that screw. I should have turned it to the left instead of to the right. David, please call somebody. Oh, you can't get anybody this hour of the night. Well, then, maybe you better turn the screw to the left. I'll be ready in a second. All right, I'll go down to the cellar this once more and straighten that thing out. By the time you're up, I'll be down. Well, you better be here. We're going to be late. <laughs> David, was that you? It was I. Oh, poor Mama. 
Mom, come in here. David's gone down. Aren't you dressed yet? Oh, I'm as good as. I'm transferring pocketbooks. That's the last step, you know. Dreadful bore. Mm. Ooh, it is certainly winter. Oh, David's really going to fix it this time, Mama. You should see him. He looks so handsome in that dark blue pinstripe. David's a very handsome man in anything. You know, I can never decide whether I like him better as a farmer or as an architect or in a dark blue pinstripe. All I know is he is the handsomest, the most punctual, the most talented man I ever loved. He's the only man you've ever loved. And will love. Ever. There. Bags all transferred. Coats downstairs. I am all set to go. You don't look so bad yourself. Girl who's married to David ought to look better than not so bad. But, oh, come on, let's go down. David, you ready? He's in the cellar. He can't hear you. You better hurry. Was that thunder? Sounded more like an explosion to me. Mommy, you don't think that... that... Could be. Come on. David, was that you, darling? David, answer me. I'm fine. Not nothing to worry about. Just... Stand back if you don't want to get filthied up. David, darling, your your face, your shirt, your suit. You look like a grease monkey. I told you it wasn't broken. I told you. What wasn't broken? The oil furnace, of course. Nothing was the matter with it at all. Then what was that explosion? Just a spark or a, a valve was stuck and took an explosion to clear it out. Oh. You thought I couldn't fix it, didn't you? Well, well, the house will be warm in two minutes. Mama, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I am. Mm. David, I am all dressed and ready to go. Hours you have been nagging me to hurry, and now you stand around rolling your eyes with pride because... You didn't want Mama to freeze, did you? But we're going to be late for dinner. Women never satisfied. All I have to do is shower and change my clothes. I'll be ready in a few minutes. After all, people, don't you expect you to be on time, you always say? Honestly. And we're late because of me. It's a crime, but because of a silly oil furnace he fixed that wasn't broken... He's elated. Just count to ten, Claudia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Even after the Christmas rush is over, shopping can involve a lot of wear and tear if you go and go and go without a pause. Fortunately, many stores now have Coca-Cola coolers within easy reach. So it's a simple matter to drop a nickel, get an ice-cold Coke, and shop refreshed. Mr. King, is David almost ready to leave? Uh, He'll be down in a minute. Uh, What, are you impatient? That is a masterpiece of understatement. She's fit to be tied. Well, tell her they won't be more than 20 minutes late. Only 20 minutes? Good heavens. What's the matter? Claudia's birthday. It's tomorrow. Oh, did you forget? Almost. Perhaps I'd better remind David. Oh, David hasn't forgotten. He's all set for it. That boy, I might have known... Well, I better go and hold my daughter's hand. See you tomorrow, Mr. King. All right, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, Think of Coca-Cola, for Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.